It's day the 28th of September and our main story is that the International Monetary Fund, which is the body responsible for stabilising the global economy, has criticised our government's plans for tax cuts, warning that the measures will increase inequality. It follows the Chancellor's mini-budget last week, which saw the value of the pound slump to an all-time low. Now some of the country's biggest lenders have suspended mortgage deals amid the uncertainty, as Gareth Barlow reports. From the organisation that works to stabilise the global economy and act as an economic early warning system came a stark and unusually blunt warning on Tuesday night. The International Monetary Fund openly criticising the government for the tax cuts unveiled last week. In a statement, one of the world's most important international financial institutions said the UK's developments were being closely monitored and untargeted fiscal packages were not recommended at a time of high inflation. It warned the government that its mini-budget risked increasing inequality. The combination that Britain is facing is very ominous and I think the uh, kind of warning that Britain received from the IMF is a kind of warning that comes much more frequently to emerging markets uh, with new governments than to a country uh, like Britain. Mr. Speaker, we're at the beginning of a new era. And that's the point the government is keen to stress, that in this new Liz Truss era, taxes will be cut and so, the government says, the economy will grow. Responding to the IMF criticism, the Treasury said we're focused on growing the economy to raise living standards for everyone, adding that more monetary plans will be made public in late November. But before that, a weakened pound means the price of goods and services imported into the UK will increase, with everything from food to smartphones liable to be affected, raising prices at a time when costs have already soared. And the prospect that the Bank of England may raise interest rates to shore up confidence means mortgage companies have pulled deals and borrowers face paying more on their repayments. In the long term, the biggest single force that drives house prices is uh, interest rates and those mortgage rates uh, and uh, the, the amount of money that people can afford to borrow to pay for houses. Uh, and I think what we're seeing is with the rapid increase in interest rates that we're about to see, it would just be very hard for buyers to afford to pay the prices that houses are currently at. Of course, predictions are only that. The future can bring all sorts of boom and bust that hasn't been foreseen. But the fear from the markets and the global body that aims to ensure a settled global market is that the government's plans may threaten the UK's prosperity, social equality and ability to ride out any waves ahead. Gareth Barlow, BBC News. Well, Nina is with us on the sofa this morning to explain what all of this means. And this statement from the IMF... It's really unusual, isn't it? Yeah, can't quite stress just how unusual this is. So this is the body that seeks to stabilise the global spreadsheets, if you like, to intervene often when smaller economies, maybe chaotic nations, are making fiscal decisions, they'll get involved. But to say to us, the UK, one of the biggest economies in the world, a major stakeholder in the IMF, you need to look at your policies, not just because they're fiscally irresponsible, but this moral intervention as well is pretty extraordinary. So they say the uh, Chancellor's mini-budget, described as untargeted, untargeted fiscal packages, will not only add to inflationary pressure, but also likely to increase inequality, make things less fair. It's unusual for them to make a statement like that. They're monitoring events at the moment closely, they say. And on the 23rd of November, when the, they published their next plan, Kwasi Kwarteng and Liz Truss, they suggest have an early opportunity to, in their words, re-evaluate. So that's really telling them things must change. Um, the announcement on Friday, of course, sparked economic turmoil for the pound. We saw it dip on Monday to the lowest point it's ever been against the dollar. It dipped again slightly last night. So we're in no way calming down with this. Um, Santander... Yorkshire, Nationwide, are among those who've suspended mortgage offers. They're looking at the fluctuation of interest rates on their debt and they're saying, we can't guarantee we'll be able to afford these mortgages if interest rates go up. And that's because the Bank of England have said significant monetary response is needed. It's quite unusual for them to say that as well about a government policy. They're now likely to increase interest rates when they meet in November um, because they've said something significant has to happen. 
Some predictions are that interest rates could go up to 6.25% by next June. To give you a bit of context on that, that would add around £500 a month to a £200,000 mortgage over 25 years. So it would be more or less than that, depending on you. Anybody, myself included, trying to renegotiate a mortgage deal at the moment will tell you what a nightmare it is and how much of their cake will be cut by it. Um, I think we have to really talk about how unusual this is the credibility of, the confidence in our government's handling of the economy is really under question globally. The IMF have said this could impact the global economy if things remain unstable, uncertain in the UK. To have your knuckles wrapped like that, as the UK, one of the world's biggest economies, is worrying and also, frankly, pretty embarrassing. Nina, thank you very much indeed. Uh, we're going to keep talking about this this morning, explaining what it's going to mean for everybody watching. So that is the situation this morning at four minutes past seven. Well, Nina is with us to explain what the implications are of this statement, which is really blunt, isn't it, Nina? It certainly is. Yeah, good morning. This is a highly unusual warning from the IMF. This is the body that seeks to balance the global spreadsheets, keeping economies healthy and preventing the devastation that can happen when economies fail. It's not unusual for them to send out warnings to smaller, more chaotic economies, but to explicitly warn the UK, one of the biggest and widely perceived as stablest economies in the world, that their plans aren't just unsound, but morally questionable, is extraordinary. They say the Chancellor's mini-budget, described as untargeted fiscal packages, not only will add to inflationary pressure, but it's also likely to increase inequality. They go as far as suggesting that the Prime Minister and Chancellor re-evaluate when they publish their next fiscal plans on the 23rd of November. And that's because Friday's tax cuts plans led to panic. Investors all around the world started looking at the pound and concluding it's no longer a safe bet. And Monday, the pound dropped to its lowest ever rate against the dollar. In the following days, we've seen some major lenders suspend some mortgage deals. They're worried they won't be able to afford them. Yorkshire Building Society and Santander being the latest. And that's because the predictions are that interest rates could head above 6% next year. To give you a sense of that, it would add around £500 a month to a £200,000 mortgage over 25 years. Really worrying if you are looking to remortgage at the moment. So pressure is mounting on the government with more criticism being given to them. So we have a guest with us now to offer some advice. She's a financial expert, Rachel Springle. Nice to see you. Um, let's talk about the offers of deals being pulled, first of all. Lenders are clearly spooked. Have you seen a rapid loss of confidence like this before? Yes, so we have seen very similar pulls, but not as much volume um, as we actually saw in the pandemic. We actually saw a lot of higher loan to value deals fall around the, the pandemic. So during 2020, there was quite a few volumes of, of mortgage products fall. And that actually meant that a lot of borrowers who had very small deposits didn't actually have any choice uh, in the market to actually get a deal. What we're actually seeing at the moment is lenders are being quite vocal as to why they're pulling their range. And it is because of interest rates and uncertainties regarding the markets. Now, we have seen over around 300 or so deals leave the market uh, in the last couple of days. Now, that is a, quite a worrying sound, but a few of the lenders have actually said that they are doing it temporarily to relook at prices, review their margins. So, fingers crossed they'll come back in the next few days or so, but there is no real answer as to yet as to when those might come back to the market for borrowers. And actually, it's important for them to protect themselves, as we saw in 2008, isn't it? So they're being cautious at the moment. That said, if you are somebody whose mortgage is coming to an end, you're under pressure to remortgage imminently. What's your advice to those people? immediately seek some advice. So speak to perhaps an independent broker to go through your options. If you are locked into a deal, you may well be able to get out early if you're happy to pay an early repayment charge. Now, depending on how much that is and locking into a rate now, you may be better off for the longer term of your mortgage, but it really depends on who you are, how much equity you have in your home, and obviously indeed any house prices. Um, so house prices have been rising, so you may actually find you have more equity in your home.
to do a remortgage. That means you may be able to fall down a lower loan to value bracket, which may mean you can get a reasonable rate. But again, it all depends on your situation at the moment. So seek that advice, Rachel. Thank you. Incredibly important uh, not to panic, Rachel, saying that lenders are saying this is a temporary measure. More deals will be on the table in the coming months, hopefully. But the reality is if you are remortgaging or looking to buy at the moment, there are fewer offers available and they're likely to be very expensive. The gamble is, though, could they get worse? So much uncertainty. Nina, for now, for joining us Wednesday morning, the 28th of September. And our main story is that the International Monetary Fund, which is a body that's responsible for stabilising the global economy, has criticised the UK government's plans for tax cuts, warning that the measures will increase inequality. Well, it follows the Chancellor's mini-budget last week, which saw the value of the pound slump to an all-time low. Now, some of the country's biggest lenders have suspended mortgage deals amid the uncertainty. Nina joins us now with more on this really quite staggering statement. It is. You can't really stress how unusual this is. So this is the body that seeks to balance global spreadsheets, uh, keep economies healthy and prevent the devastation that can happen when economies collapse. We often see them sending out warnings to perhaps smaller economies, perhaps in more chaotic nations. But to explicitly warn the UK, one of the biggest economies in the world, a major stakeholder in the IMF, that their plans are not just unsound, but potentially morally questionable as well, is really something extraordinary. Um, so they describe the Chancellor's mini-budget as untargeted. They said it won't just add to inflation, so costs, prices going up, but also is likely to increase inequality. So it's not fair in their eyes. They go as far as suggesting the Prime Minister and the Chancellor, in their words, re-evaluate ahead of their next fiscal statements in November. So that's really getting involved in government policy. And that's because on Friday we saw what happened. We saw the free fall when the suggestion of these widespread tax cuts came out and also the suggestion of how it was going to be paid for. Investors around the world started looking at the pound, looking at sterling and thinking, this is no longer a safe bet. This isn't where I need my investments to be. On Monday, we saw the pound drop to its lowest ever rate against the dollar. It dipped again last night, but recovered. And what that means is around the world, there is widespread shock that the pound has come to this. The combination of policies that's being pursued have led to substantial doubts about their sustainability. And I think the uh, kind of warning that Britain received from uh, the IMF today is a kind of warning that comes much more frequently to emerging markets uh, with new governments than to a country uh, like Britain. Spelling it out loud and clear about how unusual it is. So what are the implications in, in the real world, in real life, for all of us, what does this mean? Well, we've seen several lenders revise the offers on the table. Santander and Yorkshire Building Society among the latest to do that. To be clear, if you have an offer from a lender, that should be uh, protected. It's just the deals that they've got on offer they're revising because they're looking at their spreadsheets and thinking if interest rates go through the roof, I can't afford to lend you that because I will collapse. Um, and that's because predictions are that interest rates could go above 6% next year, potentially 6.25%. To give you a sense of that, that would add around £500 a month to a mortgage of £200,000 over 25 years. If you owe more than that, just imagine how much more it will be. Experts say this will undoubtedly put households under pressure, but what's really important is not to panic. I think it's really important not to panic. Our first reaction when faced with um, the, the media headlines and the news is, oh my goodness, I'm going to go from 1 to 10 immediately, and 10 is I'm going to lose my house. There are so many things that we can do between two and nine before that even has to be you know, considered. So you can look at talking to a broker and extending your term, which would reduce your monthly payments. Um, you can look at potentially having someone come in and rent a room. Um, you can look very forensically at your household expenditure and see if there's any way that you can reduce expenditure in other areas because your mortgage payment is the most important payment to keep up.
And this week has been a really clear and shocking demonstration of how quickly linked your mortgage, your household bills are to decisions that the government made. The confidence in the global credibility of our government, of our economy is now seriously under question. The IMF are worried that the impact of this will ripple around the world. For them to intervene with one of the biggest economies in the world, one of the biggest stakeholders in the IMF, it's really worrying and, frankly, it's pretty embarrassing. Nina, thank you very much indeed, I think. Important, I think, not to panic. That's what twice. we learned from that. Twice. Yes, twice. <laughs>